Next week, we'll discuss spiritual warfare and its relationship to tech issues. Next week on Kind of Christian. So, all right, folks, we are discussing today, does God speak? It sounds like a silly question because you might say yes, obviously, but it is a, it is a real thing. It is a question for a lot of people. Bob, let's start with you. Uh, does God speak? Yes. Uh, uh, that's kind of my testimony is that he does. When I thought he didn't, he does. He does often. He does. He like voting. God speaks early and often. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, no, my, my, my whole spiel is that God speaks way more than we care to pay attention to. Uh, so you also mentioned something before the powers and principalities that war against us cut us off. You said there's a term, um, chatty Cathy. Is that correct? Yeah. God is a chatty Cathy. Can't shut him up. Goodness gracious. Is that a, uh, now is there a Hebrew tomb for chate? Is it like chate cafe, which in Hebrew means that which cannot stop speaking? <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So God is a chatty Cathy, according to Bob. Chatty Cathy. Caleb. I like now, that. It's my name church plant. Uh, <laughs> Chatty, Chatty, Chatty Gabby. Gabby. rolling out this fall. Um, man, yeah, I think God definitely speaks. Uh, how well we listen, I don't, I think that's where the, the weakness comes in. I, I think, uh, the first thing I kind of thought of when you asked that, Ryan, was Psalm 100, and it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. And the message actually kind of paraphrases that and it says enter his gates with the password thank you so there's this symbolic kind of visual that we're crossing into a space or we're entering god's house um but the way we're doing that is not this climb or this the way we're earning it but we're just entering it with this heart of gratefulness with gratitude so, so it's kind of an interesting perspective on a way to hear from God is to be, is to have a thankful heart or a cheerful heart, or you can have a sad heart too, but you know, you're grateful for who God is and um, just entering with that. So that's a good idea. And I also think there's this element that we're made in God's image. Like he's a creator and we're his creation and God is so big. We've all got different elements of his personality in us because we're all so different. So that would also mean that God is going to speak to us differently. He may speak to you one way, and he's going to speak to me completely different. And I think that's important yeah. to understand. So, mm. so good. Caleb, a, a shockingly uh, concise, cogent, and useful point. Siri was really quick to answer that for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only it was that easy. If we could be like, hey, God. And it's like, how can I help you today? Right? And it's like, what should I do with my life? Hold, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Stand by. I'm sorry. Psalm 100. Yes. <laughs> Psalm 100. That'd be interesting. We should try that sometime. Um, okay. So God speaks. We both feel that way. Um, I, Caleb, did I gather that from your response so that God speaks? Yeah. But your, yeah. your response was that it's just getting, you know, kind of priming the, the channel for that is uh, a key to that is gratitude. Or, or how often does God, yeah, but how often does God speak and we don't know he's actually speaking? I think Ooh. that's the, that's a bigger question yeah, it is. because I think God is speaking to all of us and our ability to hear from him. How is that hindered it, or, or is he speaking to all of us? I don't, you know, but I'm just asking that assuming that he is. Um, okay. So this is, uh, this is an, I know this is a point of contention for a lot of believers um, and non-believers too, which is one of the, stated frustrations with Christianity is that if God is fundamentally all about relationship with his, uh, his children and his creation, uh, why, why doesn't he speak seemingly, uh, more often and, uh, and more clearly to a lot of people. And that's something that, uh, a lot of people, uh, wrestle with. And, uh, Bob, do you have any thoughts on that? Why doesn't he speak more clearly and more often? I think I'd go back to how I'm just going to read, Job 33, 14, for God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, and he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. There's this weird verse that like, I don't know, it always comes to mind for me in that it's like, is the problem on my end or God's end? And I think a lot of times in our 
faith journey, we, you know, our nature tends to project our problem onto God because it'd be so much more convenient if um, the agency was on him uh, uh, um, and, uh, you know, like, I'm good. Why isn't he, t- he knows where I am. He knows my number. Why isn't the phone ringing, right? Um, and I, this verse kind of throws a wrench in that. And I think about this a lot where, you know, it's like God is speaking, you know, almost like radio waves that are always kind of going around in our environment. Am I picking up on it? Am I picking up on what he's saying? Because I think like you said, Caleb, like he speaks in lots of different ways and people hear in lots of different ways. And sometimes it's a matter of growing and being comfortable on how God is speaking to you and how, or how you might pick up and understand what he's saying. Um, I think there's a lot in that. Part of that is just like our ability, but also like the journey of understanding how God communicates with us individually, uniquely. Well, props to you. It took five minutes to bring up Job. Uh, so that's, ah! that's so, good. Hey, way to, way to I'll go. I'll be depressed for the next. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, next week on Leviticus. Uh, so that's right. So Bob's stating that, you know, the autom- the, the assumption is automatic is like, well, God, you should be doing it this way. And who are we to actually get to, you know, cause one, we didn't actually make the rules too. It could be that God set it up and it's sort of like, who are we to question how, or if there, if there is a creator of the universe who made us, who are we to kind of say, well, I would prefer it if you would actually speak to me on my terms. Um, mm-hmm which is a little, which is fun to think about. Caleb, do you, I mean, I know you struggle with this because I know God hasn't spoken to you since like 1997 when you were at a NSYNC concert, but uh, tell me a little bit. Yeah, Yeah, never. Yeah. Uh, Kindly leave, sir. Kindly leave. Tell me, um, is this something you've struggled with? Um, Tell me about this for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely something I've struggled with. I think a huge part of hearing from God aligns with knowing your identity. Yeah. I think that, could, that that's, I think that's a good starting point. Um, I, I kind of have learned over the last decade that um, I've been in a lot of different seasons of my life where it's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. And I get there and I'm not fulfilled. And I've just kind of learned about my personality that I'm just a creator. I'm good at starting. I'm good at vision and dreaming but I need people around me that help carry those things out. And when I kind of learned that about who I was, it made it a lot easier for me to, to hear from God, if that makes sense. Like knowing how I'm wired and what he wants me to do, it made it a little easier to hear from God. Um, but I think there's something in the process of hearing from God. One, one thing when you were reading that, I thought of Samuel and, you know, he kept waking up in the middle of the night. And um, it's been a, been a while since I've read this. So, but he keeps waking up in the middle of the night, hearing something and it's God, the voice of the Lord calling him, but God just kept calling him over and over. And it took him a minute to figure out that it was God. And I think there's something important about the process of identifying that it is God's voice. Like if we just knew it was God's voice right away, I think it would be of less value. So I think God, there's God does something in that process too. So I don't know. I didn't, I'm not sure where I'm going with all that. I'm just trying to get these, get these thoughts out, digest them a little bit. Well, that's good. You know, the, the sad issue is for most men who wake up in the middle of the night, it's benign prostate enlargement and they just have to use the restroom. Um, so, and, <laughs> and <laughs> it's not expecting enough, that another way God speaks. That's, <laughs> that's right. Another way God speaks. So that's, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's it. But you're right. So Caleb, you bring up an interesting point, which is, um, and Bob alluded to this in his opening statement, which is that, um, we might, what we, well, you guys may be hinting as that we might say, oh, when I say God speaks to me, I'm assuming I'm putting in the parameters of how anyone else would speak to me. And, you know, God certainly can and does sometimes speak like that. But the reality is he may be speaking in lots of ways and we are just simply not recognizing it, um, which seems to be one of the, uh, the main disconnects here. Um, Bob, what are the ways, and this is something I found in interviewing so many Christians um, over the years, um, and Caleb, I found that, um, you know, people have, so, it's so interesting, like, there's just a, they say, they all say that God has a special, like, language with them. There's unique ways, and yeah. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. If there is a creator of the universe, he knows the best way to reach people, be it midnight trips to the restroom or, 
you know, dreams or whatever it is. But uh, Bob, how does, how does God speak to you uh, typically? Yeah. I mean, it's a really important question. Um, for me, I, I learned early on, you know, uh, maybe we'll get into this later, but I grew up not really sure how God might speak to me, but then it kind of came in in a radical season of my life. And immediately after someone prayed for me, like, Hey, Bob, uh, God, give Bob dreams and visions tonight in the name of Jesus. Immediately, I started having visions when praying for people. Like I would just like close my eyes and it was like my imagination that I already had became way more active, energized. Um, and, you know, I'm, I would say I'm a visual person, just, you know, how people say that psychologically or the way they learn or process things. I'm a very visually oriented person. And after this person prayed for me, I remember praying for other people in the room and it was like immediately my imagination, my mind's eye, you might say, was just like going with more energy, higher speed um, and seeing things about these people. Um, and it was a very strange experience. Anyways, I, I see a lot of things. Uh, sometimes it's maybe just a color um that's really common just colors um i dream a lot that's kind of goes in line with the visual stuff i'll have a, i'll remember a lot of dreams and um and i i pray through them and and i and i feel that god speaks to me a lot through those um those are probably the the foremost um Okay. I want to, and I definitely, we're going to come back to uh, dreams because I know that's a big topic right now. A lot of people dreaming out there. Uh, they want to know uh, if the dreams mean anything. Now you mentioned colors. Um, is this something where when you are praying um, and or dreaming, uh, you will just see, for example, people you pray for in particular colors and you have learned over time that those colors uh, correspond with particular uh, seasons, events, feelings, things, et cetera, the colors correspond to specific things? Yeah, in a way, um, you know, and it, that itself has been a journey. I mean, um, it, it, sometimes it's just like a, col a color, like a solid color that um, I, you know, I close my eyes and that's the color that I'm seeing and I'm focused on. Um, you know, nothing more than that, which is pretty abstract. And sometimes, and especially in the beginning, it was kind of frustrating. Like, God, give me more. So you're uh, praying for someone and you basically get a green screen sometimes, you know, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> it just seems like a sunburnt Caleb. <laughs> it's like, um, but but sometimes it's more detailed um, and articulated like, you know, um, uh, you know, clothing, like, gosh, I see, uh, you know, in real life, you're standing before me wearing a blue shirt and uh, I close my eyes and in my mind's eye, I see you wearing a white shirt. Why is that? You're like wearing the same thing, but it's a different color. Why the color change? What, 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 what is that detail? And so um, I find him speaking in that way a lot. And um, like I said, it's a journey. In the beginning, there was a lot of question, like, I don't know. And kind of frustrating, like, God, I'm asking you to speak to this person. I'm asking, to, you know, would you share with me something that I can share to this person from your heart that would be good for them, that they would appreciate, that might be helpful in their place. And you're giving me something that, doesn't come with meaning to me. And so it required a lot of uh, kind of digging in on my part. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. It's yeah. So you, had, so would you, this is a weird one too, but would you say you had to, uh, it's funny because in the Protestant Catholic divide and just the church, there's a semblance of like, Oh, you, you know, yeah, I don't have to work for anything. Right. And it's like, well, obviously we don't have to work for love and salvation, but there actually may be a misnomer here. We're actually um, praying prophecy if we get into that etc interpreting like Labor. um would you say that there's actually there's a little bit of work to be done you got to kind of exercise those spiritual muscles for lack of a better term yes i'm just gonna say that the short answer is yes that's very lawyer very it's lawyer like like yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i think um i think it's very often the case that um you know god is uh, you know, astoundingly, undeservingly gracious in the way that he extends, he invites, he reaches out, he begins conversations with people. But I think every Christian would attest to like this journey, like after a certain amount of time, 
like seasons might change where you get to a point where the Lord's like, okay, now come to me. And like, what, 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 what measures do you take to hear my voice? Um, and sometimes that is initiated by way of uh, a mystery that God hmm. puts in front of you. Yeah. Uh, Caleb, um, assuming if God were to speak to you ever, um, you know, <laughs> how would uh, theoretically, uh, theoretically in this world, like, but no, how is how has he sort of revealed himself to you in your 14 years on this planet? Man, I think an easy answer is like through painful seasons. I feel like that's always really fertile soil to hear from God. If you can not oh, be too bitter, <laughs> if you know, this you is can, the answer I, I wanted. <laughs> Bob's like dreams, way, colors. <laughs> I, I feel like that's always been a common. I've always heard from God in those seasons. Um, I don't. I've there have been times where. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten these pictures and the, I've had these dreams. I've had really vivid dreams before like that, where God spoken to me, but that's not really been a channel that God has always spoken to me. My wife, she is a lot like that. She hears from God in that way, but I've always kind of found God on the fringe of my ability and having to depend on him. So there's this idea that a, the nexus point is where all of man's courage collides with God's will. And there's like this intersection there. So like when Moses got to the end of the, uh, right there at the Red Sea, he's being chased. Like he had done everything he could. And he, like, he may have been the greatest fool at this moment, or he was going to witness the greatest miracle, but it was at that intersection that God intervened. And for me, that's kind of where I've always met God was where I was at the end of my rope, not always in a bad way, but sometimes in a business deal or in an opportunity, but I'm doing everything I can in faith and God kind of meets me right there. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's because my personality is more, more embracing of risk that he know, like he wants to meet me in those places, or I don't know, but that's just one way that I hear from God. So you talk about dreams in a very practical sense, like an actual dream when you're sleeping, or when I say dream, I often find God in my dreams, but they're, they're daydreams, they're visions. I'll journal something. God, I want to see, you know, you, I want to hit this metric, this very tangible thing. And it seems ridiculous. And then a couple months go by and he does it. And I open up that journal or I remember that prayer in my notes on my iPhone. I'm like, man, he really did do that. And there's this connection. So that's, that's a place for me that I really connect with God and hear mm -hmm. from God, I guess. So this this brings up an interesting uh, question because in line with um, the the question about God revealing Himself, we have examples in the Bible where people like um, Samuel or uh, Gideon are just sort of chilling, and then God just shows up and says, "Hey, by the way, like you're going to do this, right? You have you're going to do this epic stuff." Uh, you also have Saul um, who gets knocked off his horse and becomes the apostle Paul. Now I would argue in that case, um, he was probably a godly man in one sense. He just was mistaken. He was, he was actually probably praying and fasting a lot. Um, you know, but there is this sense where sometimes God like just shows up and just sort of just for some reason just goes, you, you're going to work with me on this. Right. Uh, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but like generally speaking, if God shows up and tells you something dramatically, AKA in the Bible, more often than not, it's actually a pretty big thing you're about to do, right? Or it's like, it's generally not like a, you're just going to be super wealthy, right? I mean, so there are some, but like you usually means you have a, you have a lot of work to do, right? Yeah, I think I'm trying to think of who said this, but, um, there y'all go like, again, outsourcing your thinking. Y'all you know, just quote. Yeah, all <laughs> That's all y'all do is it. plagiarism. <laughs> yeah, this is, we're going to call, welcome back to kind of, kind of plagiarized. <laughs> I think someone um, got on this, uh, you know, trying to encapsulate in that, like, you know, in proportion to the, to the, how much you're going to need to hold on to the promise of God, how is how crystallized and undeniable uh, the encounter beforehand that delivers the promise, you know, that's a completely paraphrasing what, how someone else put it. Um, but, um, I think, I think there is something to that. It's hard to, to kind of 
see a, a measurable rule at place with God doing this. But I mean, you think about, you know, like Joseph and Mary had um, visitations by angels, Zacharias, you know, like, and that was leading up to very major, you know, cataclysmic events for theology, for the course of human history, um, you know, and, and Israel's history. Like, okay, so if I don't get, you know, do I have to wait until I am caught up into some sort of like major historical events to have that kind of encounter with God? I don't think so. But you do see that happening, like where the, the Lord, I think I operate under this understanding that like God is sure to af- confirm, to affirm, to speak into things that he cares about. Um, and uh, he doesn't care about everything equally. He cares about each of us like uh, tremendously, but there is strategy to the way he um, an intention to how he reveals himself. I don't know. Do you think that there's a world where if he were to speak too dramatically that we would run the risk of like, he could like, you would fry our circuits. Like there's a, the vagueness that a lot of us feel. And when I say all this, I'm saying the, for the vast, there are people who claim to hear the audible voice of God. There are some people who claim that. Um, and then there are people who claim to hear God, but it probably wasn't, but it gets thrown around a lot. Like, Oh, I was talking to, you know, this God told me this, mm-hmm. um, which I'll admit I'm kind of in a cynical place where the, when most people say God told them something, I'm like, maybe like, or sure he did, yeah. you know, cause I'm like, it's, it's my experience has been one more that's like vague, but I've always operated in the sense of like, well, there are crystal clarity times like Caleb's talking about. And, uh, but generally speaking, there's sort of this like mystery sort of plausible deniability. And that could be for a lot of reasons, which is one, if, if God would reveal himself too dramatically, um, it could literally fry our circuits and we might even become addicted to that experience where we're like, Oh, I, I, I wouldn't trust anything else unless it's like that. And that's not supposed to be the pattern. Uh, Cause yeah, there's also certain dramatic encounters that we might have that might actually ruin our um, ability to make sovereign independent decisions. Like I, I think about this sometimes, like if Caleb just started, like if we were praying and Caleb like flew across the room, like, you know, there might be some experiences that are so like, Oh my, like, you know, mind bending that, we might forget how to be normal people. And God's like, no, I can't actually show you that because if you did that, you're going to tell your friends and they're going to think you're psycho, you know? So there's actually quite a few reasons I could think of for God wanting to stay a little, little more vague. Um, you know, Caleb, Here's what do you a think? thought to that. Um, I, I look and kind of back on this question. I feel like usually I realize that I was hearing from God well after he spoke. <laughs> like it's usually not like, he impresses something. I think a good word for hearing from God um, is an impression from God. I think that like there are times where I think God may speak audibly to the heart or he he'll give you a really clear vision or a really clear dream in the night or in the day or he'll give you these colors. But I think a lot of times what happens is uh, there's an impression on our heart and it's what we do with that impression and how we let it mold us that that's how we articulate what he said. So when we obey what the impression is, or we listen to it, or we put a pause in our life that usually a little bit of time goes by. Sometimes it's moments. Sometimes it's like two months and you look back and you're like, man, that was God. He was giving me red flags about this. Like, don't do this deal. Don't move forward on this. And, and I don't, it didn't make any sense, but I paused and I listened and now looking back, it's super clear. So I think that's something important to recognize. Now, how do you, this is what I want to ask you, how do you know, when you look back and say that was God, um, how do you evaluate? Was it because we're not, none of us here are talking, I'm assuming about God saying this is thus, this will happen to you. And it does. Right. You're talking about, you said red flags, like don't do this, et cetera, which begs the question, like, um, does, do we flag? measure, do we measure? Yeah. Well, what's a red flag and do we measure God speaking by the outcome of success, uh, because that brings up the question is, could God speak to you? Mm-hmm. And you just oh, mentioned yeah. in suffering that he like shows up to you. So theoretically he could lead Caleb into more suffering to get more intimate. Is that something that could happen? You know, does that make sense? I think, yeah, a quick, quick thought. I think the way you discern that is for me, like the code for 
sometimes something's really clear or God makes something, say you're praying about something in your life. What do you want to do for me? Like I've just kind of ha- always had this, this thought, this phrase is just follow the peace. So if, if it makes sense to do this, it makes sense to do that. There's going to be a piece like deep down that you really, sometimes you really have to dig to find it, but it's there. Um, and in the same way that there's a peace, there's also an anxiety. Now God will call us to do things that require a lot of courage and that can be scary, but that's different. You can be scared for your life and still have the deepest peace you've ever had. Yeah. That's, I think that's a, like a filter, a discerning filter on God speaking. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I would just say, I love that follow the peace. Uh, you know, for me, it's just testing the fruit of something like uh, does believing this make me want to talk to God more? Does it, is it make, does it make me, does it agree with um, the other things that I know to be true about God? Does it, um, does it produce the fruit in me of the spirit um, where I have Mm. more peace, joy, love for other people? um, um, uh, You know, um, does it, does it equip me to endure this season, this word that, I think I'm getting, or this idea that I think he's communicating, you know, does it, does it give me the ability to sit, sit through something with patience? Does it, you know, does it make me look forward to, um, you know, the fulfillment of the promises that I think I'm picking up from him, you know, um, cause his promises are good. The things that he's doing are good. So does this like, does this help me trust that more? Um, mm. yeah. Where does, uh, one of the great divides right now too, in, in faith is whether or not, uh, scripture is sufficient. Like you know, a lot of people might say, Oh, the Bible is like God sp- speaks primarily to the Bible. And I actually don't think anyone here would probably disagree that you've got a, you got a great, you know, we got a great Rosetta stone for that. All right. This is, this is the manual. Um, which is where we get the term Emmanuel, which means Hebrew for the manual. Did you, if you didn't know that? So actually I'm just kidding folks. That's not true at all. I was, I was debating like, <laughs> do I fake nod my head and agree with this? Or do Absolutely. I... It's church. Yeah, Absolutely. Good. That's good. Man. Great <laughs> word. Good. Absolutely. Uh, I know it should have been like, though, this means <laughs> which is she stubbed her toe and gave birth and cursed him for being, well, there's a whole nother episode we'll have to do on naming people in the old Testament. Cause man, in a time when there were no seemingly like not ubiquitous access to therapy, um, and processing a lot of issues with naming your child after a tragedy. I would just, you know, that's actually a good skit. We could do, we could have someone sitting there. So where do you think the problem began? Well, my, my name means like place of mourning. Um, and I've, I've kind of carried that with me. <laughs> it's dead dog. Yeah. I mean, it's dead dog. So, but, um, so there's a divide between, you know, is the Bible enough and then personal revelation, because obviously we've all seen claims to personal revelation go way off the rails. Um, and, uh, but on the other hand, uh, obviously we only had the Bible for, you know, let me ask assembled in its current form. I think what five, four or 500 years or something like that. So clearly people heard from God before. And I am personally not of the mindset that one day it was all assembled and God's like, cool, I'm not talking to anyone else. Like you got the manual. If you need anything, refer to the forum, the FAQs, right? If you really need me, I might show up. Right. So, um, you know, where do y'all fall as far as, uh, would you say scripture is supreme number one? And then you ask for sort of supplemental revelation. Is that a, a thing we could say? I, I would, I would say that that's, um, that's like a guardrail for me is scripture. And obviously scripture overlaps a lot of different cultures, a lot of different people groups, a lot of different things, but there's underlying themes that always align. Like they're not going to contradict in, in whole, you know, like when you look at the character of God, I think that's um, definitely a guardrail for me, but I don't, I think we all often in our culture, we limit our ability to walk with God or hear from God as just sitting down and opening the word, which is extremely important. But for me, going on a, a hike in the woods or a camping trip is also a moment that I could equally hear from God in, in a unique way. So I don't know what your thoughts would be on that, but yeah, I think, uh, of course, scripture is supreme. 
um, and I like how you say it, guardrails. Um, but then even within scripture, though, we have like one of my favorite kind of teasers in, in the Bible. Sizzle alert. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, you know, in, in Jesus last night with the, with the disciples uh, in John, um, mm -hmm. he says, I still have many things I want to tell you, but you can't bear them right now. Uh, and then he says that the Holy Spirit, like when he's gone, the Holy Spirit is actually going to share these things, share yeah. things and, and, and share things straight from the heart of the father. Um, uh, just like Jesus was doing when he was in the flesh in person. Um, and so there's this teaser mm -hmm. of, I, I have more that I'm going to tell you and it's going to be by the Holy Spirit. Um, now, um, you know, I, I, I think some people, you know, there's this, you know, the cessationist debate, you know, some people would say like, yeah, then, and then the rest of the epistles. Right. Um, but at, at the same time, I see that as a promise of, yeah, I'm going to be speaking to you. Um, I have more to say. Um, and, uh, I don't know. That's a promise that I hold. Uh, yeah. Christianity gets, um, Christianity has the potential to get really boring if it's only about what God did to a group of people right. that I never personally knew. But that's not the Christianity that we believe. We believe that God is doing equally, if not more, to our the people that we know and, and in my life that I needed to do and in your life. So um, I think that's a huge point. Like, I'm with you. Like, yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Also, Bob, what a teaser. Like, you know, and mm -hmm. thank God Jesus wasn't like, you yeah, know, I have so much to teach you. But first, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> hit that tithe. Hit, hit that tithe yeah. bucket. Hit one, that, one more hit round. That tithe, <laughs> hit that tithe button before you. But before you do, if you order now, my secrets. <laughs> that I is know, interesting. The dinner was great. The wine was, was great. <laughs> but just make sure you Venmo. <laughs> That's right. Venmo. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, That's nice all right. Stuff. I want to, I want to close out uh, with a little topic on dreams. And again, we could talk about God speak. This is, you know, a fool's errand to attempt to divine the secrets. Um, like Jesus said, we have a lot more to have you guys listen to, but you can't bear. <laughs> they're like, we cannot bear yeah. Ryan talking for another 30 minutes. So, uh, alone with that, but dreams, a hot topic right now. Um, everyone has them. Uh, they are a biological, natural thing that happens, um, and yet, uh, biblically, we see in Scripture that uh, they have sig major significance, prophetically um, in particular. Uh, so, uh, I guess the question is, uh, I'm, I'm going to jump out of limb. Both of you, I'm assuming, do believe that God speaks in dreams. Uh, I want to start, Bob, because I know this is kind of an area you've been digging into a little bit, but... Um, and I'll spoil it. You do believe God speaks through dreams. Let me ask you, why do you think God speaks in dreams? Uh, and then two, how do you, you know, is there any sort of litmus test that you have at first to detect whether something might be God speaking to you in a dream or a really interesting meal you cooked? And for our listeners, Bob is a fantastic chef. Uh, he, he cooks big time. Yeah. So you never know. Sometimes the wrong, the wrong uh, meal at the local taco shop could uh, have you you know, dream and revelation. So Bob, how do you do that? How does, why would God speak during dreams and how do you know it's him? Um, so your first question is why? Um, but I, I think it's trickier because, you know, it's like, again, it goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning, how, you know, sometimes we have this expectation of how we think God should speak. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's like in the midst of silence, what if God shows up with this very cryptic enigmatic story that has, you know, you, you don't know what to do with, you know, like, why would he, why would he do it that way? Um, but part of it is uh, I think how um, if we're talking about, you know, symbolic um, uh, metaphorical dreams, it, there's some, God is comfortable in mystery. He loves mystery. Uh, and it goes back to, what is it? Proverbs, Proverbs 26 to, you know, the glory of um, God is to conceal a matter and the glory of Kings. Oh, 
how about the mystery of that person's base? Um, uh, the glory of God <laughs> is to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search it out. Um, there's something there that he has purposed in our role with him. He loves us searching his mystery. There's something in that process where we um, get to know him uh, that, that can't help happen elsewhere. And there's mm-hmm. something I think I believe that we're changed on the road of mystery where I, I think there's something in the frustration and that, and that, you know, um, digging that we, where we encounter something with God. Um, uh, but that's, that's symbolic dreams. There are other dreams too, where they're pretty explicit, you know, like when, Joseph explicit. Whoa. Okay. Family um, program here. <laughs> Ew, wow, I mean, it, it, it pretty direct. Uh, they're, they're not symbolic. <laughs> they're, they're actual like real time encounters while someone yeah. sleeps. Like for instance, Joseph, uh, after Mary tells him like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, and then he sleeps sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> and he sleeps and in his sleep, he has not a symbolic, dream but a real-time encounter where encounter, yeah. you can wake up and after having that encounter with where an angel says uh this child is of the lord you know um he has peace and that enables him to obey god there's something that was imparted in that message in that way where he can wake up and like you know what now i know i i know i, I need to do it I, I know I, what my what, how I need to obey. I can do that now. I have the faith because it's undeniable for him. Uh, so uh, good. So why? That was the answer to your first question. And also, I'm imagining part of it to be because you're a captive audience, right? You know, like we're exactly. so busy doing our our daily lives, you know, on the gram, on Friendster, MySpace, all that. And uh, you know, you're he's got you, the average American, for six and a half hours, um, which is less than we should sleep announcement PSA, but uh, yeah, it's captive audience, right, Bob? That's when he would want to, he would, you know, he's like, I want to get your attention during the day, but you just so busy. Yeah. And there, and there's some, you know, back to that Job quote, I don't have it anymore. Oh, um, Job again. Here we go. But like, <laughs> Here we go. He, he, said, he says to, you know, to seal instruction, to keep men from the deep, to, to rescue their souls, you know, like, there's a lot of deep purpose in these message that messages that we may or may not consciously remember. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I, you kind of grow up like grown up in the time that I did in in the church world that I did. It's kind of like, there's just this um, expectation that like, if God speaks, it's going to be loud and really, really clear. And I, I have not really found that to be the case most of the time. Like most of the mm. time God whispers and the devil or the enemy, he's the one that's yelling. <laughs> and um, that's in good. order to hear the whisper, you kind of got to shut up for a minute and, and kind of be like, do you hear something? Or it's the absence of hearing something that kind of strikes the heart the hardest and uh, I know there, there's kind of this idea, too, that God's not a God of chaos, which is I, I believe that that's true. He's not. But he's not afraid of working it while dancing with you. Like he wants that tension, that that space of like, is this what does this look like? He I think he enjoys that dance. It's like Samuel kept waking up and God's doing something in that meantime. Now, was Samuel neglecting something or was he missing out because of uh, you know, something maybe, but there's the, the whole process is intentional by God. I think. No, that's good. Um, you like how every answer I give never really ends. It's just kind of like, <laughs> eh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's from glory to glory forever and ever, you know, from, from the alpha into the omega, <laughs> valley to valley. even to the end of the age. Uh, Bob, how do you know when something is a sort of, uh, you know, potentially a spiritual dream versus just a, a weird one? That you are just, you know, your natural REM cycle or your REM cycle just going off. So my journey is going from uh, assuming uh, most dreams are bad pizza or 
you know, I think a lot of us have the idea that we really, that I think comes from Freud, that, you know, dreams are this bubbling up from the depths of our subconscious, like just these like really like based, um, uh, the base like uh, primitive kind of desires, desires okay. that are just manifesting. Okay. Uh, going from that thinking thinking that that is the majority of the dreams and like okay maybe the ones that are like a really pleasant you know like a flying dream or something like that oh those are the best like and thinking like surely maybe that's god um and then now i'm at this point where i uh i can't afford to dismiss any dream and i I try and write down um, as m- m- as many dreams as I have as possible because I've learned that God is in and behind more of my dreams than I consider. Um, that's mm-hmm. what I thought is that I have to start reorienting my assumptions, noticing that God is speaking in my dreams way more uh, in, in a majority of instances Um, so like I, I now try to collect the memories of my dreams and pray through them and, uh, and find what God might be uh, sharing with me, um, before I dispose and forget and, and move on. You said something, um, in one of our conversations that the, uh, the, the writing of the dreams strengthens the seer muscle. Or something? Could you uh, correct the record for our, for our dozens of listeners back home? Um, yeah, I think you know um, part of it is just experience, and part of it is uh, a memory from maybe an article that I read maybe years ago <laughs> about of like neuroscience. Um, uh, uh, the neuroscience bit being, I think there's something about how you process information. You know, like why it's good to. I don't know if you heard this in in college, like, you know, you know, with the advent of bringing laptops into, into college, um, into classes to take notes, there was something lost from typing your notes Mm. uh, to, uh, from, from what uh, students had in retention when they were handwriting. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's, I think there's something there. But my experience is that sometimes I will wake up, I'll ha- I've had a dream, I, n- I remember that I had a dream, but I need to like record it. And something in the process of taking a pen to paper and writing out, I sent, there's something in like the rhythm, the speed of it, it's a little slower than say, holding up your phone and doing a voice recording. Uh, there's something in the process from your brain to your hands and scribing it out. There's an affirmation happening. Yeah. It's like, uh, and, and seeing it visually externally on the page, there's something happening in your mind that, um, is strengthening, um, the ability for you to tap in to, uh, the seer realm. This is going to get really charismatic for those listening, um, like hashtag uh, cares mania. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, because it's something that can be developed, I believe is, uh, I believe there's some sort of like kind of muscle vector of, uh, of where you can by diligence and obedience, strengthen your ability to recall and go intentionally to that place of your, um, your mind's eye, your spiritual, vision um and 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 recalling your dreams and recording your dreams you strengthen that ability i almost jumped in and said this but then i was like ryan's gonna make fun of me but since you went out on the limb and said it i'm gonna uh, (laughs) i've heard the kind of the same teachings a lot along like uh neuroplasticity and neuro pathways essentially being strengthened by affirming a thought so like you know the bible talks about this a lot transform like in, in Romans 12, like, you know, about our minds transforming and about yeah. all these different things. But I think when we, when we take a thought, there's actually a science that happens when we focus that thought, the thought is strengthened by proteins actually attaching to whatever, you know, is in that neural pathway and it strengthens the thought. And the more you do that, 
the, the more consistent and strong that thought can become. So it's the same thing with addicts and different things there. Those neural pathways are so strong that, you know, there's, there's a lot of real science there to that. So you're not just saying like, Oh, I'm dreaming. And then I'm dreaming more, but like you're, you recognize that 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 is a way God speaks. You recognize it is a gift you have. So you're going to take actual practical, tangible steps to strengthen that. And that's, that's a big deal. That's cool. What sort of things, Bob, does, uh, do you find that in your dreams that you feel God has revealed to you? Do you find that, uh, I think sometimes we think of, because biblically these dreams are typically these symbolic, uh, there's going to be a famine for seven years and then there won't be, you know, and there's sort of these like big, you know, uh, epic things. But, you know, in your uh, dream life, uh, do you feel like, what are the kind of things that you feel God kind of reveals over time as you kind of aggregate and pray and process through all these dreams? I mean, any number of, I mean, even what you brought up, the famine, like, it's one thing to say it like God talked about this her- terrible event. Um, but I think it's more important to frame it from God out of his heart for the prosperity of the people thought, I got to let them know something that will matter to them. And at a, in a time frame where they would be able to prepare and to mitigate the disastrous consequences otherwise. Like that's, that's a loving God who knows what's coming, who says, wait, 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 I got to tell them. And he God also could have that. stopped the famine to be fair. Right. But he'd rather have a people who pay attention to his voice in subtle ways and act mm. on it and learn to rely on him. Good. Um, and I think he does that on smaller scales with us individuals uh, every day. Um, I mean, like, uh, we have this phrase in my church, there's this, uh, you know, this concept of tending your heart, you know, it's, you know, basically taking the practice of like waiting on God and, you know, God, is there any lie I'm believing, believing, is there any like unforgiveness that I'm harboring or someone I need to forgive Mm. or something like that? Um, Kind of in a more disciplined way that's really practical and repeatable for individuals, you know, in your quiet time. And, um, you know, that's one thing to like, to, to when you get alone with God and ask like, God, uh, is there something that I believe that's like messed up, like about you or myself or the way that you see me or something that I need to repent from or something. But I find that God does that in our dream, in my dreams. Like I will have mm-hmm. a dream and I'll like write it down. I'm, I'm looking at, I'm like, Oh, I think, I think this is a lie that I'm believing. You know, I could, I, where before I would, I could dismiss it as like, whoa, that was messed up or unpleasant, or I really don't want to share that with anyone. (laughs) Um, (laughs) When, when now, if I, if I take it from the perspective of like, what if God is a loving omniscient God who is always looking for ways to inform me of what's on his heart for me. If, if that was the God who was authoring this dream, then I could see this as this, this might be informative unto prayer. Like this might be informative for like something that I could like, he's letting me know like, Hey, did you know that this is under your hood? Did you know that um, your oil life is at 15% and you know, you know um, things like that. Um, but also the other things of like imparting promises, imparting, uh, you know, sometimes here's an example, actually, can I, do we have time for an example? Just of like, course, always. Um, like, uh, was it was a last week. Uh, it's been a little busy at work, just in, in waking life. It's been um, a little busy and I, I've had a little bit of like, um, okay, it's busy now. And uh, I actually can see some things circumstantially coming up that I know it's like, oh gosh, it's going to actually get busier <laughs> in a couple months. Um, and that's been a little bit like weighing on me. I have this dream last week where um, I am at my office and I, and it's getting really busy and crazy, but, um, my, m- one of my partners comes in, my boss, he comes in and asks, Hey, how are you doing? And I say to him in my dream, uh, Hey, I'm actually sincerely, I'm actually think I'm doing all right. I'm managing. And actually, I think I'm leveling up. Like, I think this time of busyness has, is, is good for me. And he responds, um, uh, you know, that's, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, it's actually, uh, now that you mention it, 
that's my been my experience every year when it gets like this it does that for people it levels them up and it's good for them um and that was it that was the extent of the dream i wake up i'm writing it down i'm thinking like huh well this is definitely like i I could dismiss that as like that's just kind of come bubbling up from my me processing my uh circumstances of late but the thing is is that what I just told you going into like, before I laid my head down to sleep that night, I was a little stressed and anxious, but in the dream, what was I? I was actually like, I got this. And I was expressing like the assurance of like, no, it's actually going to be all right. And it's going to be fine. You might say my dream self had more faith than my waking self. Mm. Um, and if I take that as a narrative that was shared with me, I would say that the author of that narrative was not my flesh, was not the spirit of fear or anxiety. The author of that dream, if there was one author, was trying to uh, impart vision of faith for my circumstances now. Does that make Almost sense? like the dream, the, the dream self had, had more confidence in who you are than your waking self, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there was an inner, your soul entrusted its yeah. identity more than you yeah. trust that. It surpassed um, the, the local fleshly mentality or obstacles. It was beyond mm-hmm. that. And so like that, that ain't no Freudian id expression. Yeah that was something else that was nourishing to me that I would say came from outside to me. So like if we were doing inception, you were talking with Bob on your like level two dream and you're like, Bob, you know, have more confidence in yourself. Right. And then you get him to fall backwards and come out of the dream, you know, (laughs) and wake up. So I forget, how do they wake up in those? I have to see inception again. I know it's you have to talk, wild, man. You know, I know that movie was so crazy. I remember walking up there going like, am I just all in a dream? You know, but I love the idea of a little token to remind you, like keep yeah. spinning. So, you know, if you're like, that's like, oh, we need something like that to be like, what world are we living in? Right? Am I living in like the, the, the fallen world or am I living in the kingdom right now? You know, <laughs> well, fallen Nothing kingdom is realizing you're, you're in a dream. You're oh. like, Dang it. I'm in the dream. And then it's I like, know. you're trying to trick yourself. No, I'm, I'm really. And then you're like, screw it. I'm awake. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, I had a dream the other night that I was couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was just tossing and turning. I was like, I was like, this sucks. I woke up. Like no, it is. There's like dreams like when you put in a full day at the office, you know, and you wake up and you're like, dang, I'm doing double shifts. But we'll have to talk more about that next time. I uh, I, I had a uh, dream a couple weeks ago. Uh, our bedroom is upstairs. It's the one part of the upstairs of the house, and there's a uh, like a master porch that goes out. So there's a glass door that you you can kind of come in. And in my dream, someone had snuck in. In my dream, I left it unlocked. So in my dream, I wake up. And I'm like, oh, no, the door's unlocked. About that time, the door slowly opens and cracks a little bit. And I, so I tuck under the covers in my dream. And then in reality, I wake up and I'm under the covers and I'm desperately for 10 minutes sitting there trying to figure out if I just dreamed I went under the covers or what happened. So well to find out whether very scary. (laughs) Yeah. To find out whether Caleb is truly undercover, uh, we will have to tune in. We'll have to tune in next week. Uh, guys, I think we probably should close this out just because the listen, you know, is, uh, we don't want anyone like in the new Testament, you know, listening on a window and, uh, falling out of it and then having to call Bob to resurrect him, you know, (laughs) pray him back into, into life. But, uh, guys, thank you so much for doing this and for joining us on kind of Christian. We could always talk about God speaking, uh, all day long. So we'll just, uh, Bob, will you come back and interpret our dreams again? Oh, that'd be so much fun. Oh, all right. We'll do a live Discord server on that. That's right. <laughs> so to find out, just hit that subscribe button. What do your dreams mean? <laughs> Caleb, as always, it's been a experience having you on the show. Here to keep it dull, baby. Here to keep it dull. <laughs> Keeping it dull. So, all right, kind of Christians, God bless you and God bless these most precious United States. <laughs> do 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 do